What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt. This big ugly orange behemoth behind me here is my Clark 125 wheel loader. Now if you haven't seen the previous videos on this wheel loader, it's been sitting before I got it for about 20 years from what the lady told me. Uh, and it sat parked outside of a garage with trees growing up through it and everything else. With the help of a friend, I went up there, we got this thing running, and was able to actually drive it home over three miles back here to my farm. Now, I've been using it around the farm. It's been pretty handy. I bought it with the intention of putting some lipstick on it and selling it to make a couple bucks. All of you on the YouTube said, ah, uh, no, he's going to fall in love with that thing and he's going to keep it. Well, I haven't made up my mind yet, okay? <laughs> Anyways, today... I'm still in the process of putting the lipstick on, you know, even if I would keep it, I don't want it to look like this. This actually came from a company not too far down the road from my farm, and they paint all their equipment some putrid shade of orange for some reason. Don't ask me why. So what I want to do is get this thing steam cleaned off today, take care of all the mold and mildew and flaky paint and oil and grease and that grime and everything else that's accumulated on this thing from sitting 20 plus years plus just being an older machine I believe this machines from the late 70s early 80s but anyway there's lots of crud that we can get scrubbed off of this thing and I think it'll help make this thing look a whole lot better and then uh, basically that's getting it prepped out for paint we're gonna give it the old five gallon Ritchie Brothers overhaul and tss, the whole thing with some nice yellow paint and uh, that way it actually looks decent again as you might be able to tell, it's kind of already parked in a mud hole, so it's pretty hard to clean something when it's parked in a mud hole. So let's get this thing fired up, pull it over onto the gravel where I have the steam cleaner set up, and we'll go ahead and get to work. Now this thing isn't horrible at cold starting, but it is 29 degrees this morning. We had a good hard frost overnight, and it doesn't like cold starting, so we'll see. Might get to see some cranking. And contact! just got smoked out it's gonna go now you ready just hate to redline a cold motor like that but it sounds like that's what she wants starting up reliably ever since I brought it home about a month ago. This is the first lick of trouble I've had and of course it's going to be on camera. <sighs> kind of almost seems like she's starving for fuel like the fuel filter might be got some moisture in it and it's frozen up. Might put some heat to the filters and see what happens. Well, it's 
still got a quarter tank in it, so I don't think that's the problem. Now, if you didn't watch the previous videos, you won't know the story of the fuel system here. Uh, <clears throat> so it sat for 20 years with fuel like halfway up the tank. So that's quite a bit of diesel fuel. It holds like 80 or 100 gallons or something like that. It's a lot. So what, instead of just wasting all that fuel, you know, we did dip it and check and, you know, it didn't look bad. It doesn't look like it's got any algae in it or anything. And diesel keeps for a long time. It's not like gas. So as long as you don't have any uh, algae in it, or water it, it should be good to go so uh, we couldn't see anything really wrong with it other than it smelled you know like old diesel so I siphoned it down like halfway and then diluted it with a bunch of uh, fresh clean diesel and yeah so we didn't siphon the whole thing out there might have been a little bit of water in there or something and if there was the fuel filters would have caught it and that could be why we're having issues here on a cold morning so here's our filter set up here um you know they're in line this one's the first one and the back one catches whatever the first one doesn't so i'm thinking the problem would probably be with this first one normally i have a little handy little burns o matic torch i carry in my truck but it's not there today oh what are we gonna do yeah so no little torch but i found the uh, canister from a tiki torch that'll do I'm just gonna keep rotating it between them. I'm not gonna get them too hot. You could damage something inside the filters. Just wanna get them warm and let that heat soak through them. I always hear stories from old timers back in the day, especially working like up north and stuff with the big old D8s and D9s and big old iron that doesn't like to start in this weather. They would actually build little fires underneath the machines before they even tried to fire them up. And that would just kind of help uh, thin the oil out and ungel the fuel and everything. It's a real chore to work in a cold climate. Luckily, this is just a <laughs> mild climate at best, comparatively. All right, I've been gently heating these things for five minutes. They should be plenty warm enough to melt any ice that we got overnight. seem like an improvement though Ugh. I had that thing flat-footed the whole time so it should have been screaming and it, it wasn't so not getting enough fuel still more heat obviously the best thing to do would be replace these filters but I don't have any handy I was trying to get this done this morning but we might be going to Napa Titan. 
Well, we're back on this behemoth, I guess almost three months later now. <laughs> I did I did get it to move. I got it to fire up long enough to move. Um, I needed it in a pinch and I didn't have the camera with me, but basically it was warm that day. This was only like a week or two ago. And you can see it's no longer freezing and stuff because we got leaves on the trees. So it just had to be water in the fuel system because I just cranked it for a second, popped right off like normal. And it seemed like it ran good until I started coming down the driveway here and it started losing power. I was able to take it and move the little something I needed to real quick, which is all I really wanted it for, but it just barely made it off the driveway to this spot. So those fuel filters are most definitely clogged up bad with either dirt or water, and I'm guessing quite a combination of the two. So I got us two new fuel filters and some injector cleaner and some heat. We're gonna put in that fuel and try and clean it all out real good. And yeah, we should be should be stellar. We're gonna dump these in a pan and see what that fuel looks like. All right, now we're gonna pre-fill our filters with just a bit of this Lucas injector cleaner. I think this stuff works pretty good. Maybe halfway. Then we'll top them off with diesel fuel, reinstall them. This machine must have one heck of a good lift pump on it because uh, it primes itself really fast. Because it really, aside from cracking this fitting loose over here and pushing air into the fuel tank and forcing fuel over here, there's no way to uh, help prime the system. There's not even bleeder screws on top of this filter housing. So there is going to be some air in here, but it, uh, it does a good job on its own. Go ahead and dump these filters and see what kind of nastiness is in them. Well, it really doesn't look too bad. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's definitely some brown gook down at the bottom. So that's, I'm going to guess that uh, the filter media is probably pretty well packed with crud. Maybe it was more of a crud issue than a water issue, but... Yeah, I don't know that... That fuel there doesn't look too, too bad. Same thing with this filter, lots of crud at the bottom. Oh well. <clears throat> I got like a bottle and a quarter of heat here. This is supposed to be... Uh, it's like alcohol, and it's supposed to, I don't remember if it's absorb the water or help pass it through the fuel system without hurting anything. No. Actually, we had like one full bottle of heat. I'm just guessing that there's probably 30, 30 or 40 gallon of diesel in this tank still. Hopefully that'll help keep from clogging up our new fuel filters. Go ahead and put a little dab of this Lucas in here too. That ought to do her. Okay, let's hope this pig fires up now. Contact.
Yeah, it's just a just a touch overkill. What is that like? Uh, maybe a yard or so. A little over a yard, maybe. Wasn't even a quarter of the bucket. Best I can tell, this old girl is just running beautifully now. No complaints from me.
got to be three eighths of an inch thick.
Thank goodness that's over with. How much paint flake do I have on my face? I feel like there's a lot of it. Well, I don't know if you guys can tell, but it does look a lot better. I know it still looks like crap because it's five different colors and three different shades of rust. But uh, yeah, it really clean, cleaned up pretty good. Um, there's still paint flake all over everything. So what I think I'm gonna end up doing before I crack the paint can open and give this thing a five gallon overhaul, I think I'm gonna hit all the rusty spots with a wire wheel real quick. Uh, we're not painting a Ferrari, you know. It doesn't have to be that great. The people who painted it orange last you know they didn't they didn't do a stellar job <laughs> but uh we just want to make it one color again it should uh help the resale value also i noticed in the previous videos in the wheel loader there were some people that were already saying it was yellow that's orange this is yellow and i don't know if the video screws people up or there's that many colorblind people out there or what but i used to work for the company that painted it orange and i know that it's orange because all their equipment was orange. <laughs> anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny that so many people thought it was already yellow. That's not any shade of yellow I recognize, but beside the point, we're going to paint it yellow. I could probably spend another two, three days on this thing just sitting there chiseling at it with the uh, the steam jenny. More and more paint just keeps coming off, but you gotta you got to stop at some point. Ugh. Well, I guess it's about time to wrap up this video. Seems like everything to do with this wheel loader comes with a pile of work. I guess that's what happens when you keep getting into bigger and bigger machines. But uh, the next time you guys see this loader, we're going to be prepping it out for paint and uh, probably shooting it and paint all in one video. Like I said, we're not painting a Ferrari. We're just trying to get some color on it and make it, uh, make it look a little more presentable. And I think I have one job for this thing before I, uh, before I put it up for sale. I'll let that uh, be a surprise in the future. But anyways, like I said, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you have already, be sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future content on this loader, my other wheel loader, my other equipment. I got all kind of crap going on. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't notice, we got some sweet swag for sale over in the store. Uh, there's a link down in the description or just go to dieselcreek.com and you'll find everything you need. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Later.